Swaziland, one of the poorest countries in the world. It is the last absolute monarchy on the African continent and its population has the lowest life expectancy on earth. Most of the Swazi people make a living from subsistence farming. They have some cattle which graze on public land and a small piece of ground where they grow their vegetables. This way of life has some risks, like a bad season with a poor harvest. On the other hand it grants each family independence from rising food prices, from the need to find employment as well as the worry of losing their employment and thereby allows them to live a self-contained life. The sustainable way of life is under threat in our industrialized so-called developed world. A major problem which came into existence in the 1960s was when European and American paper companies started planting alien trees on a large scale in monocultures. The wages in Swaziland are low and the king's policies guarantee a free market. Up until now approximately 10% of Swaziland's land has been transformed to monoculture tree plantations. The impacts on small-scale farming and the environment are huge. Geosphere has been active in Swaziland for several years informing the public about these bad impacts in order to stop the expansion of new timber plantations and to change the current model of monocultures. On Saturday, the 26th of November 2011, GSV Swaziland organized a meeting in Nilangano, which is one of Swaziland's main timber industry areas. One big topic was industrial timber plantations and their impacts on water resources, traditional healers, small-scale farming, infrastructure, biodiversity and the economy. In addition, a presentation about climate change was delivered. Amongst the participants were a representative of the Department of Forestry and Tourism, two traditional healers, a community's chairperson, a representative of the timber industry workers, a high school teacher and some Geosphere Swaziland youth members. The meeting in Langano was a platform to discuss issues between all involved parties in the timber plantation problem. So, even the water it consumes a lot of water, the gum trees. I, 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 Some of the, the, the places where they swam uh, today, it has dried up. Yes. I think in the escape, no yeah. one is going, no going to punish them because there's no law now which says once a, once, once a company like this pollutes a river, will be punished like this. I don't want to get into the politics. Mm. But I think it will be important that you locate the leadership of the team mm. as workers. Mm. Because it is not the leadership that suffers, mm. but it is you as workers. Mm. Do, you, do you sometimes include it that we, we, we're really not concerned with the wages? We're concerned that we can't even plant our vegetables now. Mm. First of all, we've got no time for the vegetables and for the garden, in fact. Mm. Secondly, we live next to the forest where the soil is poor. Uh, right now, we as the uh, workers, we don't have the representative. We don't have the union. The union does, does not exist anymore. So whatever they give, they just give. Mm. They take it or leave it. The minimum wage when an employee works in the industrial timber plantation is 480 per month. 480 per month. That is the minimum wage that can be paid to an employee who works in the industrial timber plantation. And then I'm telling you today that one log of a gum tree costs 91 rand. The, the only thing which comes into your mind to continue the thing is actually is the bigger plant than anything else. And the tree, <coughs> I said that my tree, the tree, I tell you, is what we need to gain life. After the meeting, the Geosphere youth went on an expedition through a timber plantation area and were able to recognize many bad impacts, such as soil erosion and invasive tree infestations. Especially in Swaziland, the uncontrolled invasiveness of alien trees represents a big problem for rural communities. 
Grassland disappears and can't feed cattle anymore. Alien trees grow directly at the origin of fountains and in time dry them out completely. Most rural communities depend on fountain and river water because they don't have any other water resources or infrastructure. The lack of water can also mean a bad harvest and thereby threaten the community's food security. The attendance of many young people at the meeting emphasizes the concerns of Swaziland's next generation regarding their future and these plantations. The problems caused by the overconsumption of paper in the industrial countries threaten Swaziland's chance to escape from a circle of extreme poverty. A chance to fight this poverty is to give back plantation land to the Swazi people so that they can produce food for their own needs instead of producing and exporting cash crops. 10% of Swaziland's area is not available to satisfy Swaziland's hunger. Indeed, it only satisfies the paper hunger in Europe and Northern America. Certainly, the timber industry provides jobs in Swaziland. But these jobs are poorly paid and do not allow their workers to feed their families as they could do if the land was given to them for food production. Geosphere Swaziland is in the process of being officially registered as a non-profit organization with the aim of promoting justice for both its people and the environment.